In the year 2015, the creators of the hit video game series Dark Souls released a game that centered around British people consuming the blood of otherworldly creatures known as Great Ones in order to cure their illnesses and transcend their mortal forms. They called their game Bloodborne. Mind melting, godlike interconnectivity between levels. I was here eight hours ago. NPCs laughing Good like sentence. psychopaths after finishing every <laughs> single sentence. Banger cosmetic items. A game world filled with helpful notes from the other members of the community. Fragile, easily breakable doors blocking the main character's access to new areas. And confusing, batshit crazy lore that ensures the players won't understand what the fuck is going on at any point in their playthrough. Your character arrived in Yana from a faraway land, I have no seeking a cure of any for some unnamed this illness. Is this is so You sign a contract. Bizarre. Yeah, it's a Miyazaki game, all right. In Bloodborne, you create your very own character after picking the appropriate voice, name, origin, and being sad for not being able to give your character enormous milkers. You'll make a blood contract with a hentai monster that makes you eligible to use goofy-ass weapons to kill anything, ranging from grotesque monstrosities to pregnant women, disabled old men on wheelchairs, and Babies! You're gonna kill a lot of babies in this game, it's actually very concerning. After bathing in the excessive blood of your enemies and playing with their mangled corpses, you can go to the main hub of the game, the Hunter's Dream, where you can use this old man's sex doll to level up your character and face Yarnum's worst abominations. The game starts with you killing generic monsters like werewolves and trolls. But the thing about Bloodborne is, the more you play it, the lackier it gets. By the end of the game, you're fighting aliens, dead anime waifus, big ass pigs, crows that are fucking dogs, this petrifying nightmare, and literal gods. Cosmic horrors, the mere sight of which can drive a man to the point of insanity. Who the fuck came up with these designs? Was it you, Miyazaki? You little devil. Bloodborne takes place in the gothic, Victorian-esque city of Yarnum, with a population that consists of blood-crazed Brits and unhinged psychopaths slowly succumbing to madness. You see, this is why you shouldn't create a religion based around using alien blood. This godforsaken city and its surroundings can be broken down into several different locations that each contain a variety of diabolical, intricately designed enemies traps, and bosses. We have areas like the fishing hamlet, which is inhabited by fucking fish people. It's like Bikini Bottom from Spongebob, just significantly more evil. We also have the Forbidden Woods, which has such a convoluted fucking layout that you lore accurately get lost here, even on your 15th playthrough, and simultaneously get molested by a bunch of assholes that can have multiple snakes burst out of their goddamn head. What the fuck? Yarnum is also full of creepy as fuck satanic locations like the Unseen Village. There's a high chance that you'll end up here without your consent and severely underleveled. So my advice is to get the fuck out of here as soon as you can. Another area worth mentioning is the Upper Cathedral Ward, where Bloodborne straight up becomes a horror game. Not because of its dark corridors or the unsettling music, but because it's full of brain suckers that force their fucking tentacle into your brain and permanently steal your precious insight. It's very difficult not to have several homicidal thoughts whenever they pull this shit on you. Not a wholesome location by any means. Now if you haven't already played the game, you probably don't even know what insight is. So sit down and listen carefully, my man, cause this shit is trippy as fuck. Basically, insight is a stat that shows the amount of inhumane eldritch knowledge you've acquired by exploring Yarnum and defeating enemies. Aside from making some parts of the game a little harder, having more insight exposes you to the weird cosmic shit that surrounds everyday people but aren't detectable to them. Like this fucking thing. 
Look at it. Its head looks like an 80-year-old man's nutsack. On your genocidical baby-killing journey through Yarno, you'll meet a lot of NPCs. Like this nice cannibal guy that you can help out by directing him to a safe place full of defenseless refugees. Or this lass, who you should murder and feed her her own brain syrup in order to complete one of the game's side quests. Jesus Christ, Miyazaki! How many more atrocities do we have to commit before seeing the end credits of your game? While you're in the Forbidden Woods, you also meet this insane lunatic who calls himself Walter and constantly talks about exterminating vermin or some shit. The night brims with defiled scum and is permeated by their rotten stench. My suggestion for you is to immediately kill this maniac and steal his dashing headpiece for some extra drip. The biggest difference between Bloodborne and FromSoftware's other series, Dark Souls, is the lack of shields. I mean, there are two shields in the game, but they ain't good for shit. No, instead of a shield, the game hands you a fucking gun and forces you to fight with extreme aggressiveness. You can't just hide behind a shield like a pussy. You coward. You make me sick. And dodging backwards is a bad idea like 95% of the time. But on the flip side, every time you get hit, you'll have a few seconds to get all of your lost health back, baby. So you always have to be on the offense when you're battling these bastards. You have to fight them face to face, dick to dick, like a real gamer. And you're gonna do it with some of the most badass, god tier weapons in gaming. Perfection. See this normal, ordinary sword? What if I tell you by pressing L1 on your controller, this generic ass sword will turn into a gigantic hammer that can destroy anything on its path? Now look at this one! It's a goddamn cane! An actual fucking cane! Just like the one my grandpa used to beat me with, and it transforms into a saw-like whip! This katana-like sword has to be covered with the blood of its utilizer to become more powerful when it transforms. So when you hit L1, your character will impale themselves like a samurai committing fucking seppuku. It's the most bloodborne thing in existence. And this one they call the boom hammer. Probably because of the sound it makes when you hit people with it. Boom. As you see, Bloodborne's weapons all have the ability to either turn into something completely different, or at the very least a more powerful version of themselves. That's why they're called trick weapons, and normal enemies aren't the only guys you're gonna slaughter with them. As I said before, every area in Bloodborne has its own boss. Now boss fights are the peak of the Bloodborne experience. There is just no better feeling than being in the midst of a bloody battle with a 16 foot tall horseman that wields a light beam shooting greatsword. With the game struggling to maintain more than 20 frames per second and epic music playing in the background, since this is a From Software game, most of the bosses will Fucking bully asshole, you to oblivion, bitch. especially the DLC ones. I personally still have PTSD from fighting little shits like the Orphan of Cos. And yes, one of the bosses is an actual orphan child. He comes out of his dead mother's womb like five seconds after you enter his arena. <laughs> Someone has to stop him. He can't keep getting away with this. 